Hello, beautiful children of God. Uh, I was told that it's hard to hear me. Um, and I think what's happening is that my hearing aids are really good, so I sound loud to myself, so I'm talking much more quietly. So what I'll try to do when it comes time for the service is turn my hearing aids down and be as loud as I used to be, because I've heard some of you are not hearing very well during the service. If you are not hearing well during the service, you want to say, speak up, you know, like, let me know, and I'll try to speak up. I think what's happening is I try to speak up, but I sound really loud to myself because of my hearing aids. And so, so uh, how I want to get past that is turn my hearing aids down, and then I'll just be my old loud self, and hopefully everyone will hear me all right. Does that sound like a good way to work it? All right. Now, next week, we have our um, All Saints Day service. So it's going to be partly the same, partly different. But it's important, an important day in the, in the life of our church. And so we have uh, contacted and, and some of the families, but we, it is going to be uh, something we're going to do next week. So we have had, like every year, we have those that are part of our beloved family and those of us who are friends and neighbors who have, who have died. Some of them services that I have done in the community. Uh, so remember that next Sunday is All Saints Day. That also makes today Reformation Sunday, although we're not making a great big deal of it. Um, it is uh, when some churches are remembering uh, Martin Luther and his thesis and the beginning of the breakaway German and Swiss and Dutch churches from Roman Catholicism. Are there other announcements? Look at this. We have... Our, you want to say something about it, Mary? No, you go ahead. This is something else. Okay. Look at that. Our hat and mitts and socks and everything, it's coming on. So God bless you all who gave something towards this. We're trying to be merciful towards those who are homeless this cold season. Mary? I spoke with um, Bob Seafang this week, and he asked me to give an announcement regarding the Salvation Army. He said that they would be, again, back at Kroger's this year. We, at first, we didn't think we would be doing that at, at a store, but they're going to do it again. So he just wants to give you a heads up that we will be needing people to man the kettle, the red kettle. And he should be here next week, and he'll have a little more information then to give you. Thank you, Mary. I like how she tipped that microphone yeah. like a rock and roller. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dawn? Can everyone hear me? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cafeteria goals. Anyway. Um, Hayden does not have a lot, but he does still have some Boy Scout popcorn, if anyone is interested. I have it at my house. I think we got classic caramel, jalapeno cheddar, and cheddar. And we have one of the butter popcorns available. Uh, the sale is ending soon due to the pandemic. Obviously, he wasn't coming here to sell. He wasn't going door to door, so if anybody's interested, please let me know and uh, I'll hook you up. <laughs> Thank you, Dawn. One of the things our church has done, and I do as a pastor, is try to buy one box of Girl Scout cookies and one box of uh, popcorn from every person who sells because we love you and we support you. So uh, God bless Hayden and we'll remember him. Are there others? Gary. Just a quick uh, mention that Stewardship Sunday is coming up. I can't think of a more critical year for us, uh, so please be aware of that. Look for the notices that are coming out, and also we're uh, right now in the beginning stages of a planning session to which you will all be invited, and we're going to discuss our future. Thanks. 
Yes, these are important days. Thank you, Gary. Are there um, any other announcements as we begin? Hearing none, let's open our hearts to God, let's love one another, and let's prepare our hearts for worship by listening to the prelude. Holy Spirit, come and descend on our hearts as silently as a dove descending, as brightly as a flame burns at night. Holy Spirit, come to kindle a new love in us, as comforting as the presence of a friend. Holy Spirit, come to abide in us. Amen. Amen. Back before the days of GPS, there was map and compass. And a lot of maps, they, the old maps, they would draw a compass on them. And that helped people find their orientation to know where they were going. That's basically what I've been doing for four weeks in a row. I have been reminding us of what we stand for, what we believe in, that helps us stay together during times when we are being divided as, uh, as a nation. 
Um, and, and so I'm not saying there aren't real differences. I'm just saying that as a follower of Jesus Christ, there are some values I hold. And I believe that, I, that we share these values together. So here's my little compass. So love is not just something we feel, it's also something we do. And so we are people of truth or light, spirit or life, and of love, of authentic and life-giving relationships. God is love. 1 John 4, 24. Hmm, no, I can't be right, because I did 1 John, I did John 4, so it's got to be, I got the, the scripture wrong, but we know God is love. <laughs> So if you have your Bibles and you want to do a little homework, you'll go, okay, 1 John 1, 5, God is light. John 4, 24, I think is God is spirit. No, that's, that's God is love. 1 John 4, 24, so, did, uh, so God is spirit is the one I'm messing up on. So anybody want to have your Bibles and fix the pastor? The pastor's broken this morning, apparently. Uh, and then there's another, there's another piece. That really, change, that really makes us Christians, and that is Jesus. We are Jesus people. Um, who Jesus was, and how Jesus taught, and how Jesus showed us God, and how Jesus showed us how to live. Um, in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so we see all these things through Jesus Christ. So my thinking is that if we remember that God is light, God is love, God is spirit, and Jesus Christ, we will have the, the direction we need to navigate these difficult times. And that's what I hope for all of us here today, and for our nation, and for our world. Thank you. In, um, Joys and concerns, um, our beloved Anne has had a medical um, condition. Some of you may have heard of this in, in the mail. She was with, uh, that she was with us on Wednesday at Sunshine Children's Home putting up, uh, putting up decorations and then had a, a medical event later on that day and she's recuperating at home, but she does need to see uh, like a neurophysiologists, so there's stuff going on. So we pray for Anne. Are there others, joys and concerns to share? John. I have a joy. Good. Hearing Sonia's voice the last couple of weeks uh, doing this. <laughs> thank you. Indeed, indeed. Wonderful. Thank you, John. Others? 
Deb again. Yes, we will continue to remember Deb. Um, thank you, Mick. Shall we pray? Spirit of God, we come before you with faith, we come before you with love, and we come before you with hope. And together we have faith also in each other to be faithful, and love for one another, and hope for our future. We thank you that you have given us a great way through Jesus Christ. We thank you that you are love, light, and spirit. We pray that we may have enough guidance to live faithful and wholesome lives in a world that needs us. We pray for those in our midst who are suffering. We think of those who are suffering from depression and stress and those who care for them. We think of those who have health conditions in other ways and are, are being doctored. We think of the difficulties of aging and the difficulties of relationships and the financial difficulties that people are going through. We remember our homeless with our hats and our gloves, but oh Lord, we do pray for as much as possible a life-giving and life-sustaining way of being together in society. Less cruelty and more mercy, more justice. Oh God, help us as a church to see our way through these political, these pandemic, these times. We are your children and we are following in the way of Jesus Christ. We ask for your help. We pray for our nation. We pray for wisdom and justice and good to prevail on election day, however we see that. And we pray for a good outcome for our whole world when it comes to the things that matter for people, that they have enough to eat, that they have a place to live, that they have education, that they don't live in a dump, in a sense that we're not polluting the world and, and uh, ruining our own nest. Oh, Spirit of God, help us, we pray, locally and worldwide, we ask in Jesus' name. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And though we use the traditional word Father, we do know that God created men and women in God's image, and that God's image is Father, but is also so much more than just Father.
Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We consecrate all we are and all that we have. Use these gifts to guide us in the spiritual enhancement of our own lives and your people everywhere. In Jesus, Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen.
So I'm not wearing a mask right now, and it's because of, so you can see my lips, and if it, uh, but I can wear it as well when speaking. But I'm doing it like this, and, and it seems to be working okay. Beautiful children of God, here we go. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness hides his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. So we as Christians are about Jesus Christ. It's really what makes us different from other religions is that our primary story is Jesus. And in this song I just sang part of, All Other Ground is Sinking Sand, is a reference to the end of the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus says that if you hear his words and do them, you are building your house on a solid foundation. But if you don't do them, the flood will wash you away. So this is not just a matter of saying that all other ground is sinking sand, meaning other people are sinking sand or other circumstances are sinking sand, but it's saying that on this foundation of building our lives on the way, truth, and life of Jesus, that we have a foundation that the floods will not wash away. Now we are the United Church of Christ. We are like the home for stray cats. People wind up in the United Church of Christ many times because the theology of other denominations and places was just not fitting for them anymore. And so if I've gone to uh, I'll talk about the, the Lutherans, for example, or the Roman Catholics, most of them were born Catholic, live Catholic, and die Catholic, which is fine. And same way with Lutherans. Born a Lutheran, live a Lutheran, and die a Lutheran. And some of you are um, born United Church of Christ. But if you go to clergy meetings in the United Church of Christ, it is not uncommon for half the people there, including me, to have started out someplace else. But we wind up in the United Church of Christ because the United Church of Christ is a big tent that lets people think for themselves and doesn't impose on people a, a, a very restrictive view of Jesus and how to follow Jesus Christ. It treats people like adults that they have the ability to think for themselves and how they think about Jesus is a journey and it's going to be all right. So let me run through some of these that exist in the United Church of Christ. I'm going to go from the most skeptical to the most um, orthodox. Do you know there are some people who wonder if Jesus is just a character that was written in the New Testament and whether he was really a real person? And what we have in the New Testament is a literary work about this man, but not really necessarily a historical person. There are some people who believe that about Jesus Christ. And they are in the United Church of Christ because they say, even though we just see Jesus as a character from literature, what a fine character he is. And we see that this is a good way to be in the world. There are those in the United Church of Christ like that, and I say, welcome. And there are those who believe that Jesus was a real, live person. 
And the reason why the New Testament shows that is because of the transformation of the view of God that is evident throughout the New Testament that would have required a charismatic individual for it to have come to birth. So it's not just that, uh, that if people would have written Jesus up from fiction, they probably would have made him a better fit with where he started. But as it is, Jesus' view of God transforms the traditional ways of looking at God, and Jesus' views of being a person of God transform the traditional legalistic and tribal ways of looking at that. And so this points to the existence of a real person who brought change into the world. And so it is that there are people in the United Church of Christ who believe that Jesus is a real person, a good example that the New Testament does, does speak of, and we do well to follow his example. But that still just sees Jesus as a person in history, not a person who is present with us today. And so a higher view of Jesus is that Jesus was not only a charismatic mystic who gave rise to a new way of looking at God and being people, but is like a saint or a prophet, a, a founder and a living presence in the world today. And so Jesus is not only from long ago, but Jesus is a living presence to whom we can come to today and we can say, Jesus, walk with me. And we can say, Jesus, help me. And we can say, God, please hear my prayer in Jesus' name. And so Jesus is that. And if that is how you believe in Jesus in the United Church of Christ, you are welcome here. And then there is that Jesus is more than a prophet, more than a saint. That Jesus is a Savior who not only showed us the way of salvation, but actually brought salvation into the world through his sacrificial life. And the way I look at this is that he brought the presence of God, the light of God, the love of God into every corner. In the mythic story, from highest heaven to deepest hell to highest heaven again, bringing the presence of God, saving the entire world, bringing the presence of God into every part of this universe. That would be Jesus as Savior. And we are certainly, there are those in the United Church of Christ who believe this. And that's not all. Jesus is, for many, the very revelation of God. Jesus shows us the character of God. Jesus makes visible what we cannot see any other way. And so Jesus is what God looks like should God walk about in the world. Jesus shows the power of God, but even more, Jesus shows the love and the justice and the sacrifice of God. I was reading this week about the difference between Moses and Aaron, and they said Moses was um, brave and knew where he stood, but Aaron was a chicken and went whichever way the, the winds blew. And, um, and how Moses was a man who stood by his principles. And I, and I see that as true, but the thing that, in my argument with Steinecke in his book, um, Pastoring Congregations During Anxious Times, which I thought was a good time for, uh, to read during 2020, um, the, uh, Moses killed a lot of people. He was willing to kill for his faith. Jesus was willing to die for his faith. Jesus did not kill for his faith. Jesus died for his faith. He showed us that way. And so Jesus is the revelation of God, a God who does not kill, but a God who suffers. So Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and uh, that is what is recorded in the Gospel according to John. So beautiful children of God, 
If you need discernment on how to get through the stuff of your life, I have no advice for you about stock investments. Um, I can't. And I can't give medical advice either. My advice has to do with the, the meaning of life and the way of Christ. And in this I would say that that compass over there is a good thing to keep in mind. For Christ we could say, what would Jesus do? For Christ, we could say, what does it say about Jesus in the New Testament, and how can that inform my life and my decisions? But also remembering those three texts, God is light, God is spirit, and God is love. And with those in mind, I think you will have a good compass, not for which stock to invest in or which medicine to take, but how to be a decent human being in this world that needs decent human beings, wise human beings, reconciling human beings, human beings that are not killers, but human beings that may even be witnesses or able to sacrifice for the future like Jesus did. So stray cats, Dan, when we, whenever we do this, I mention it once in a while when I'm in ministerial meetings and they talk about the United Church of Christ and I say, well, the United Church of Christ, they let me come into it. And Dan, who, who does get along with me just fine, you know, would say, we're still thinking about you, Ed, whether we should have or not. <laughs> but here it is. I am not lost and I don't think you are lost either. Because we have a way, a truth, and a life. And as another spiritual goes, no matter what happens, we have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. But the good news is that I am not in this alone, am I? You're with me, aren't we? Aren't we together in this? We want to follow Jesus. No matter which one of those understandings you have, we can follow Jesus together. So even though I'm asked, we're not really singing as a congregation, I'm going to switch this to we, and that will be the close. We have decided to follow Jesus. We have decided to follow Jesus. We have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning.
Sarah for making it Reformation Sunday. Thank you, Van. As, um, as she was singing, I remembered where the verses that I got wrong were. Too late now, though, huh? Uh, so let's stand and let's say hello to the people at home. I have heard that there are many of you who watch at home. We love you. We love you. And uh, we're glad to have you with us. Let us go out and be salt and light in this world. The world needs people who follow Jesus in society. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen.